Hi, everyone, and welcome back to Brian's Horror Corner, and welcome to this impromptu horror movie review. Uh, as part of my Days of the Dead uh, horror convention series for the month of February here. Um, if you're new to this series, basically I'm going to Las Vegas in two weeks, two weeks from today actually, to attend the Days of the Dead horror convention in Las Vegas. And so I'm I'm watching and reviewing uh, several movies before I go related to um, guests that are going to be at the horror convention. So I already I already watched and reviewed the original Hellraiser movie because we got Doug Bradley, the Cenobites, um, and, um, Andrew Robinson, and Claire Higgins that are going to be at this convention that I'm going to. I decided, though, <clears throat> I wasn't planning on doing this, but I decided to go ahead and watch and review the second one as part of this series as well. In part, because both these movies are on the same DVD, I got this double feature here of the first one and the second one. So I thought it kind of silly not to... Uh, watch and review the second Hellraiser movie because a lot of the same a lot of the same guests at this convention are in these in both of these first two movies. Claire Higgins, um I believe all but two. The female Cenobite was played by a different actress in the first movie. The actress who played her in the second movie is the one that's going to be at the convention. Barbie Wildey, I think it is. Um and then Andrew Robinson wasn't in the second movie either. Um but otherwise Claire Higgins um, of course, uh, Doug Bradley and the rest of the Cenobites are all in this movie as well as at the convention, just like um, they were in the first movie. So, so yeah, you guys are you get a you get a treat here. I decided to watch and review the second movie. I had time to do it, so kind of an impromptu review here, but um, it works out well as part of this uh, Days of the Dead horror convention series. So. The second movie is entitled Hellbound, Hellraiser 2, and it's a 1988 supernatural horror film directed by Tony Randall and starring Claire Higgins, Ashley Lawrence, Kenneth Cranham, and Doug Bradley. The second film in the Hellraiser franchise, Hellraiser 2 draws heavily upon and was made by much of the same cast and crew as its predecessor. Hellraiser, which was released a year before, Lawrence reprises her role as Christy Cotton, who is admitted into a psychiatric hospital after the events of the first film. There, the head doctor unleashes the Cenobites, a group of sadomasochistic beings from another dimension. Um, so basically, the film opens in the, in, a pa in the past, where a British military officer known as Elliot Spencer is transformed into a Cenobite known as Pinhead after opening the uh, Lament Configuration. Uh, shortly after her father is killed by Frank Cotton, Christy Cotton is admitted into a psychiatric hospital. Interviewed by Dr. Channard and his assistant, Kyle McRae, she tells her account of the events and pleads with them to destroy the bloody mattress that her murderous stepmother, Julia Cotton, died on. After hearing Christy's story, Dr. Channard, who is secretly obsessed with the lament, lo with the lament configuration, has the mattress brought to his home and convinces a mentally ill patient, Mr. Browning, to lie on it and cut himself with a straight razor. The resulting blood frees a skinless Julia from the Cenobite dimension. McRae, having snuck inside Chenard's house to investigate Christie's claim, witnesses the events and flees. So yeah, that's the setup and the premise for Hellbound Hellraiser 2 from 1988. As far as the cast goes, we have Claire Higgins returning as Julia Cotton, going to be at the convention. Ashley Lawrence as Christy Cotton. Kenneth Kenneth Cranham as Dr. Philip Chenard, Chenard Cenobite. Uh, Imogen Borman as Tiffany. Doug Bradley as Pinhead slash Captain Elliot Spencer at the convention. Nicholas Vince as Chatter, Chatter 2 at the convention. Simon Bamford as Butterball at the convention. Barbie, Barbie Wildey as female Cenobite at the convention. Sean Chapman as Frank Cotton. Oliver Smith as Mr. Bro Mr. Browning, Skinless Frank. And William Hope as Dr. Kyle McRae. So yeah, that's the setup, the premise, and the cast for Hellbound, Hellraiser 2 from 1988. Um, this is a very mixed movie for me, especially coming off the original from 1987. There's things I like about this movie, but I have a lot of problems with this movie as well, which I know is interesting because for some people, this is their favorite Hellraiser movie. Um, that's interesting, and I expect I respect everybody's opinion. I don't share that opinion, and I'll get into why with my review here. So let's start with the pros or the things I liked about Hellbound Hellraiser 2. So 
I do appreciate the fact that they didn't just rehash the first movie. They definitely took this in a different direction. They took what was set up from the first movie and went in a totally different direction with it. Um, tried to explore more of the world of hell, if you will, um, and expand the story beyond just the house that we got in the first movie and explore much more of this world, the world of the Cenobites, as it were, Leviathan. Um, yeah, it's definitely not a rehash of the first movie, although it is important to see the first movie for this one because you got to have those, you got to have the essence of, of, of Hellraiser. Um, especially as it relates to the Cenobites from that first movie. But they, they took all that stuff and just went way over here with it. Like the first movie was very much body horror and um, very dark tone, very uh, sadomasochist, sadomasochistic. I'm probably still saying that wrong. And they kind of went into like the labyrinth um, direction with it. That's kind of what this movie reminds me of a little bit is the labyrinth. Um, so yeah, very different tone. Uh, very different direction with this movie than the first movie, um, for better or worse, in my opinion. But I do appreciate the fact that a lot of sequels will just rehash the same movie with maybe throwing some different characters here and there, a different setting. But ultimately, it's the same beginning, middle, and end that you get. And this isn't really the case with this movie, so hats off to them on that regard. Um, I really enjoyed... Um, Seeing and seeing and, and reconnecting, revisiting these characters from the first movie, both good and bad, um, and revisiting their relationships with each other as well, as complicated as they are. Um, they're all in great form here, especially Julia, Christie, and Pinhead. Of the returning characters, I think those three really um, are really on point once again in this movie like they were in the first movie. And on that point, I think the performances are also really great here, especially by Ashley Lawrence's Christy, who I thought took a step up in her performance as Christy Cotton from the first. I mean, I thought she was fine in the first movie, but I thought she really upped her up the ante in this movie. I think she's much a much better final girl in Hellbound Hellraiser 2 than she was in the first movie. Um, she makes better decisions. Um, yeah, she's just a more quintessential final girl, if you want to say, even though this isn't really a slasher movie, but she's just a stronger final girl, I guess is the best way to say it. And I thought her performance was much better here. Um, and then again, Claire, uh, Claire Higgins as Julia is really good in this movie. She's kind of, she's kind of the main lead in this movie. Like she was one of the main characters in the first movie, but I mean, in a lot of ways, she is the main villain in at least the first half of this movie. Um, until we're introduced to another villain, a new character in this movie. Um, once again, the gore effects are great in this movie, especially the skinless body of Julia, like Frank was in the first movie. Great detail with veins and blood vessels and muscular mass and and just the blood involved in it. It's, it might even be better than the first movie, honestly, especially with the close-up shots and stuff that we get of it. Um, so yeah, the gore effects, the blood, that's all... That's all really on point once again in this movie, I thought. I have to say, too, I actually really enjoy the hospital slash psych ward setting as the main setting in this movie. Um, hospital settings or psychiatric uh, ward settings are really good horror settings to begin with. And I think it especially works in this movie, especially when you're dealing with the themes that they are of, of torture and pain and death and blood and gore and all those type of things. It only makes sense that the setting that it would be takes at least in the real world, our world uh, to be set in the hospital slash psychiatric ward. So I thought that was very effective because um, the setting really heightens and really heightens everything um, as it relates to those themes I was talking about. So it just makes sense from a natural standpoint. And then finally, seeing Doug Bradley, I thought it was cool to see him in his human form at points in this movie. There's one scene at the very beginning of this movie, and then a scene in, towards the end of the movie where he sort of detransformed from Pinhead back into uh, um, Elliot Spencer, his human character that he was in real life before becoming Pinhead. I thought um, I thought those were really good, interesting scenes, especially the first one where he actually we actually see him transform into Pinhead. I thought it was really intense, and I thought Doug Bradley did a good job really selling that. And then, like I said, once he's um, de-transformed, if you will, back to Elliot Spencer towards the end, I thought both of those scenes were very effective, and it was really cool to see Doug Bradley um, as himself, as it were, in the movie. So... 
Yeah, those are my pros for Hellbound Hellraiser 2 from 1988. Let's get into some cons or the things that kind of hold this movie back and, and, and definitely for me put it underneath the first one. Um, I just think the movie's way too ambitious for what they were able to deliver and what they were able to execute. You know, it was a cool idea to decide to explore this world of Leviathan and go into the world of hell that the Cenobites live in. Um, but ultimately, because of direction, because of effects, because of visuals, it just it kind of left me underwhelmed by it. I mean, it's, it should be grandiose. It should be this this huge, expansive universe and... I don't know. It just kind of seemed like they, it kind of, it kind of seemed like it's some of the shots of Leviathan that they just kind of called it a day at five o'clock and said, well, that's what we got. And they tried to fix a lot of it in post. That's kind of the impression that I got. And um, as a result, there's just a lot of glaring problems in story and visuals and just overall believability of this movie. You know, the first movie was very much set in the real world, even though there was a lot of, a lot of things happening that you know, you had to sh that stretch credulity to say the least. But again, it's a horror movie. But in this movie, they really stretch. Um, you really have to dis um, expand your disbelief, if you will, or suspend your disbelief. I always say expand, suspend your disbelief. And I just don't think it works as well, because like I said, they're trying to create this this world, the Cenobite world. And it just doesn't that's just not executed well now. I didn't realize that until I, this most recent watch that it, this movie wasn't directed by um, Clyde Barker like the first movie was, and it really shows. No effect, no offense to Tony Randall. I think he did what he could given the script and the story, but I could tell the direction just wasn't as solid in this movie. Um, so that's another thing. Also, they use stop motion more in this movie as as it basically comes to our final villain character who ends up being Dr. Chenard. Ch Cenobite Chenard. He's got these things that come out of his hands that are very stop motion, and they look terrible. They look terribly outdated. Um, I, I like stop motion if it's used well, but it really does. It's really badly outdated here. I thought it looked worse than a lot of the a lot of those type of effects in the first movie, which admittedly weren't as many as they were in this movie. But that really took me out of the movie in certain scenes. Also, another con I have is I have to say the two new characters in this movie, basically Tiffany, played by uh, Imogen Borman, and Dr. Chenard, played by Kenneth Cranman, Cranham, who I think is a good actor. I didn't really like either of their characters. I didn't feel like their characters added that much to this movie. Um, it didn't really add any value to the movie. They were, they were just kind of there to throw in new characters and... I really also didn't feel like they fit in that well with the returning characters. It just felt a little bit forced to me. And I don't know, especially Tiffany. I just found her to be kind of an annoying character that honestly I could have done without. And I really don't think she was that well acted either. I don't know Imogen Borman all that well. I don't know what else she was in. Um, she's mute, of course, for 90% of her role in this movie. So that doesn't help either. But being mute, I didn't, I, it really didn't come across all that well. So yeah. Those two characters really just didn't do it for me in this movie. Um, I One of the things I really don't like about this movie from a Hellraiser standpoint is I don't like the, the fact that Dr. Chenard, or, when he's a Cenobite at the end of the movie, just so easily takes out all the main Cenobites, you know, including Pinhead, um, as well as Butterball and, and female Cenobite and, and Chatter, Chatter Cenobite. I mean, there's not even a fight, really, you know, uh, Pinhead throws chains and hooks into him. He easily breaks them and then just stabs them all. And they, it was kind of cool that they kind of turned into their human form again when they die, um, all of them. So you could kind of see what they were like in real life, which, of course, they don't acknowledge anymore. But you just don't. I don't understand the point of that. Why would you? I mean, these are the baddies in your franchise here. And, and the second movie did so easily dismiss them and kill them off by this new character that didn't work for me to begin with, as I just mentioned. Um, yeah, that was really lame, and I didn't feel like it was really well earned. I mean, this this Chenard really didn't do anything to to be so strong and so um, you know so much more um, powerful than these other Cenobites that have been around for two movies now. So I didn't like that at all. Uh, the effects within Leviathan are really poorly aged as well. Like the first movie, anything to do with sort of the lightning or the lasers or deconstruction transformation or transformation having to do with the puzzle box or in this movie the diamond shaped thing 
that comes from the puzzle box. They look really bad. Um, yeah, the effects, once again, just like the first movie, I had the same issue in the first movie. In this movie, I think it's even more disappointing, though, because they're trying to get us into this world of Leviathan. And again, like I said in my opening con, it just... It was too ambitious. They took too big of a bite out of the apple for what they could actually chew and swallow, if you will, in my opinion. And, and the effects certainly play into that. So, And then my final con has to do with the editing. I don't think this movie that was very well edited at all. And um, on that point, they have there's certain scenes, like there's a scene where Julia, when she first comes back as sort of a skinless um, figure with the, with the blood and the, the muscular mass and the veins and all that, the doctor, Dr. Chenard starts to wrap her up in gauze, and they focus on this for way too long. Um, they don't need to do that. I mean, move on. Wrap an arm and, and part of her hip or something and move on. Well, we get it. You're, you know, And then you can show her being all wrapped up. You don't need to stay on it as long as they did. And Just little things like that make it, uh, make it less superior than the first movie, in my opinion. And like I said, Clive Barker not directing this movie really came across here. And... Um, but yeah, the editing's just not great in this in this movie as well. So yeah, that's what I got for my pros and cons, guys, in my review for Hellbound Hellraiser 2. It's not a bad movie by any means, but I can't agree with those that say they like it better than the first one. I definitely am a bigger fan of the original Hellraiser from 1987. To me, this is a this is I don't know if it's a significant drop off, but it's definitely a drop off from the first movie and I can put it on and watch it, but if I'm in the mood for a Hellraiser movie, this is the movie that's going on way before this one. So, as I said in my review of the first movie, these are the only two that I've seen at this point. I know there's like seven or eight more in the franchise. Um, a couple of them I think I have access to either through streaming. I think I have um, Hellraiser 3, Hell on Earth, on one of my movie packs. So I'll check those out at my leisure as I can. But as far as these first two movies... Um, I'm going to give the second movie, Hellbound Hellraiser 2, a 7 out of 10. You might think I'm being a little bit hard on it. I do know it has its fans, like I said, ones that prefer it more than the first movie. I didn't find it that scary either. That's sort of another, you know, the first movie had some some pretty intense, scary moments in it, in my opinion. This movie was much more like the Labyrinth. It was much more, Leviathan was more well lit, more well uh, lighted, more well lit, however you want to say it with bad effects and, and just, again, it's the ambition. I applaud their ambition, but I have to give a thumbs down to the execution that they were actually able to pull it off. So that's how I feel. Seven out of 10 for Hellbound Hellraiser 2 from 1988. Go ahead and comment down below what you guys think of this movie. Do you like it more than the first one as much as the first one? Or are you like me where you like it less than the first one? But you still like it well enough. Comment down below. Please like this video and hit the little notification bell so you don't miss any of my upcoming reviews and other videos for this series in February and as to do with Days of the Dead. And please subscribe to my channel so you don't miss any of my uh, great horror content, not just this series, but what I have coming out the rest of the year. So hope you guys enjoyed this review. Hope you're enjoying this series. Thank you for watching and stay scared. Bye.